Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sridhar, and uh, I'm going to be the presenter for uh, today's uh, webinar. And uh, today's uh, webinar topic is uh, on uh, creating best plastic products through simulation. Here is a content and the overall agenda of the webinar. We'll go through uh, the brief overview of uh, plastic materials and uh, we'll try to see a few of the plastic workflows, plastic workflow in the sense, some of the uh, commonly used analysis and uh, some material models also we'll try to understand. And uh, I have few models and files followed by few customer uh, references. And in the end, we'll also try to understand uh, the interesting topic called uh, material calibration. So uh, plastics are uh, widely used nowadays that uh, we sometimes forget uh, that they are uh, relatively uh, newer materials. So unlike uh, steel, which is uh, existed for more than 2000 years, plastics are uh, only less than a century old. Uh, further, given the diversity in plastics, it is not easy to come up with some uh, common theories that are applicable to all of them. So uh, there are many gaps in our understanding of material behavior of plastics. So there are some uh, more details uh, which we have uh, taken from uh, Wikipedia. So uh, first synthetic uh, plastics was the Bakelite, which was invented by uh, Leo Bakeland in 1907, uh, 1907 uh, who also coined the term plastics. So there are two types of plastics, basically thermoplastics and thermosets. So thermoplastic uh, becomes kind of moldable after a specific temperature and uh, solidifies upon cooling. So example for this are like uh, polyurethane or polystyrene and PVC uh, type of uh, materials. And thermosetting plastic, it can melt and take uh, shape only once and it will remain solid uh, forever. So basically uh, this means that chemical reaction that, uh, that is occurring is kind of irreversible. So a few of the examples here are like uh, polyurethane, uh, uh, we also call it as PUF and Bakelite and vulcanized rubber are a few other uh, example of thermosetting material. So a few of the facts and uh, figures I have uh, listed uh, here in the form of a graph. So uh, the biggest market for plastics is uh, obviously in the packaging uh, industry. So as you, can, uh, as you can imagine, today almost all the packaging is done with plastics. But surprisingly, second biggest industry is building and construction industry, which is uh, mainly using these type of uh, uh, plastic. And we have to note uh, here like uh, dominant uh, materials like PVC or polyvinyl uh, uh, chloride, uh, these are extensively used in piping. So that's why building and construction makes the second biggest industry, which is using this plastic. And the third biggest industry is automotive. It is not that surprising fact. And uh, if you can note, uh, so there are uh, different types of plastics in X axis, which is uh, being used in different industries. From a material behavior uh, standpoint, plastics have a highly complex uh, behavior. As can be seen from the attached image of uh, um, a modulus versus temperature, uh, plastics behave in an uh, extremely nonlinear uh, way. So uh, this is not a uh, stress versus strain curve which you are uh, seeing on screen. So uh, the behavior of plastics uh, gets affected not only by the temperature, uh, but also some other uh, factors uh, like strain rate or moisture or some kind of radiation like UV or IR uh, uh, related radiation. 
So uh, all these factor also matters in the behavior of uh, plastics or its material behavior. So damage mechanism also uh, tend to be complex and uh, it is kind of varied when it comes to plastics. From a simulation point of view, uh, we have a huge challenge here. Uh, firstly, given the diversity of uh, plastics, there, are, there can be uh, no single material model that can work for all plastics. Unlike in uh, metals, we, we, we cannot uh, uh, depend on one single material model. Some of the constitutive models uh, will work uh, well for uh, some plastics. The same uh, may not work for others. So uh, even when uh, constitutive models uh, are present, calibrating the material parameters becomes an issue in many of the scenarios. So we have a section dedicated for calibration that uh, more details on calibration uh, is there in the upcoming slides. So uh, given the complexity in uh, simulating plastics, the best way is to only consider the behavior uh, that would be seen during the operating conditions. Uh, and that is uh, our conditions of our interest, I would say. So uh, for example, if, you, if uh, durability during a regular use is of our concern, then elasticity should be uh, sufficient. So we need not uh, consider any other uh, uh, properties. And in case if uh, strength is our concern, then uh, yield criteria or plasticity uh, we may have to include in the material property. So in general though, uh, the material behavior for plastics, even for regular use, uh, tends to be complicated and requires elasticity, plasticity and viscoelasticity. So although a combination of uh, abacus material models does help to a large extent, uh, sometimes our uh, customers write uh, their own uh, UMAT or uses subroutine to capture the uh, real-time uh, behavior. Further, we'll try to understand a few of the uh, plastic workflows. So here I have uh, one workflow, workflow on ABS belt clip. So. Uh, it is a haptic assessment which we are uh, doing here. So here uh, ABS is uh, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. So it is a common uh, type of uh, thermoplastic uh, uh, polymer. And as I told uh, initially, moldable. Uh, it is it is a moldable structure above a specific uh, temperature, and it uh, solidifies upon uh, cooling. And it is used ex extensively in automotive uh, trim component, basically. And uh, we have application in, in toys and other household uh, consumer goods industry as well. So ABS is uh, uh, widely used in all these areas. So in this case, uh, we have a belt clip, uh, which should be uh, designed to provide the right user experience, I should say. So uh, it should, uh, uh, if, if the, uh, if too much force has to be applied uh, to secure it, uh, it would be kind of annoying for the user. And if too little force is needed, then uh, it would not, the user will not feel safe. And uh, in some of the cases, uh, it may not be safe as well. So the objective he here um, is to basically get the force profile to decide if the user experience is right. So also an additional objective is to assure that uh, the clip has a good fatigue life. So in this case, we use a hyperelasticity uh, material model for ABS, mainly origin model uh, we have uh, used. And uh, plasticity or viscoelasticity is uh, not required as it is uh, not relevant here. So we are not uh, uh, checking any case of yielding or uh, uh, rate dependence in this case. So in the result of uh, force profile, we can infer how much force has to be applied and uh, take a, a decision based on this force. In fact, a better uh, way would be to use eyesight to modify the clip uh, geometry and uh, tailor the force profile itself. 
So on fatigue, we use multi-axial uh, SN curve with the critical plane searching uh, method uh, based on uh, like basically it is based on continuum approach in FEC. Uh, so it can also be used for uh, polymer, uh, uh, means mainly fatigue of uh, polymers. So other workflow is on a POM uh, a fixture and uh, here POM is uh, polyoxymethylene or methylene we call and uh, it is usually called as acetal as well and it is a thermoplastic uh, used in uh, precision parts that require a kind of high, uh, high stiffness or uh, dimensional stability. And also when it comes to friction it should be on the lower side here uh, there is one more uh, pipe which is made up of uh, tpu and a tpu is a uh, thermoplastic uh, it is uh, full form for this is like a thermoplastic polyurethane so this is also used extensively in uh, uh, making of these kind of pipes so here, when it comes to the workflow, uh, in this case, like uh, the POM fixture uh, needs to hold the TPU pipe. And the objective is to ensure that the POM fixture does not break during the operation and to ensure that it has the required fatigue life based on uh, vibration loading. So you can see the top curve, which is showing the loads that uh, come on top of this uh, 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 POM fixture and uh, as it can be seen there is a uh, assembly load followed by a vibration load which is a repetitive uh, which is a type of repetitive uh, load and then a service load so the, the cycle keeps repeating here The material assumed here is uh, hyperelasticity, and we have used a Marlow model. And uh, plasticity and visco uh, viscoelasticity are uh, not important here again. So here our results of interest uh, would be uh, stresses to ensure that the fixture does not break first of all and secondly uh, fatigue life and uh, more specifically fatigue reserve factor. Uh, so similar to the previous case study on belt clip this is also a good uh, candidate uh, to be optimized with the eyesight for better performance here. I have my third workflow uh, which is on container uh, lid. Again, uh, uh, POM material is used here. So uh, in this case, the container lid uh, should provide enough uh, a sealing to, uh, to kind of prevent the leakage of any kind of fluid. And uh, the period of uh, leak proof, leak proof period should be at least more than 1000 hours. And uh, during this 1000 hours, it will be under the different operating conditions. So since here the time is involved, creep uh, characteristic uh, becomes kind of important here. So uh, the material model therefore should include creep beside elasticity and plasticity. So creep parameters uh, mainly for uh, power law need to be uh, calibrated. Although there are uh, different ways to do this, one way would be to use the data matching capability which is available in uh, eyesight. And uh, this is uh, discussed in uh, in a while now. We will be discussing that in coming slides. Uh, further, uh, thermal expansion coefficient is also uh, included to consider uh, thermal expansion and uh, related uh, thermal stresses and uh, distortion. And uh, we have to uh, observe here that uh, the model is axisymmetric. Coming to the results, the results of uh, interest would be uh, here uh, the contact pressure 
a zero contact pressure would uh, indicate a potential leakage site. Uh, similarly, contact opening can also serve as a direct uh, guide to find out areas of potential leakage here. So we have to note that uh, this is a general methodology to access uh, uh, the possibility of uh, leakage. In almost all cases, uh, the fluid itself is not uh, modeled because it becomes more and more complex. So if the fluid pressure plays a role in creating a opening uh, for leakage, uh, we can model it with a pressure penetration capability in Abacus. Again, uh, given that uh, this is a time depending uh, problem, the effects of uh, creep can also be uh, studied here. And uh, one useful way would be to see how leakage worsens with time for a given uh, a pressure load. Again, eyesight can be used to explore design alternatives based on uh, different lid parameters. And uh, since leakage is a serious concern, uh, reliability and robustness studies can be uh, extremely useful in the coming, uh, like kind of uh, coming up with the kind of practically optimal optimum design. So my next case study is on hindered uh, shrinkage analysis. So uh, polymers uh, tend to shrink due to various uh, reasons, and uh, here hindered shrinkage. And as, you, as the name itself is uh, suggesting, is uh, something that hinders or reduces the shrinkage. So in this case, we have a poly uh, polyoxymethylene, uh, which is nothing but a POM, and uh, a roller is a POM uh, material, and the below part, which is uh, like it is inserted into a, uh, a steel insert. So the gray colored portion is steel, uh, is made up of uh, a steel. So this basically hinders the uh, shrinkage of the plastic. So uh, the roller uh, must provide maximum stability at all the times. And uh, there should be no stick slip which would lead to mobility issues as well as uh, a noise. Manufacturing process also induces uh, residual uh, stresses which may lead to stability issues. The objective therefore is to see the effect uh, hindered uh, shrinkage uh, has on the performance of the roller. So the material model uh, used uh, here is uh, elasticity with the uh, cream. The analysis uh, here starts from an axisymmetric heat transfer analysis uh, to obtain uh, a temperature distribution. Uh, the results are applied to a uh, axisymmetric structural analysis to get uh, stresses based on uh, thermal uh, expansion. So uh, we use uh, SMG to create a uh, full uh, 3D model uh, based on the axisymmetric analysis and uh, SRT, like uh, basically symmetric result transfer uh, uh, we do uh, to map the uh, results on the a full 3D model from the axis symmetric analysis. So the last step here is to do a full 3D static stress analysis with creep to get stresses during the operating conditions. So here again, our uh, interest I means our uh, result of interest include the residual stresses as well as the creep effect. And uh, as can be seen on the images, the stress hotspot tend to reduce or kind of dissipate over time due to uh, a creep effect. With a combination of axisymmetric analysis uh, uh, and SMG mainly for uh, through 3D. Uh, such complex analysis can be performed quite uh, quickly uh, with the packets. My next uh, case study is on 
a PA66 uh, material. I, here the PA66 is nothing but polyamide 66 and uh, it is mainly commonly known as nylon 66 and uh, a type of nylon uh, which is a thermoplastic that can be used uh, that is used extensively and uh, some of the uh, examples of the places where these uh, materials are used are like uh, tires, uh, ropes or cords and gears uh, etc. A power steering uh, should provide the kind of appropriate torque level depending on different factors. One of the important components of a power steering assembly is the worm gear or the worm wheel. Uh, the objective is to optimize the worm wheel for the requisite uh, performance and also assess uh, its design for infinite fatigue life. So the Abacus 3D model uh, uh, here does not include incorporate the gear teeth uh, actually and uh, we have uh, modified it and we have made a simplified uh, 3D model here. So uh, the case study here is uh, a very good example of uh, power of portfolio. So we use uh, Tosca uh, for uh, coming up with a design proposal based on a nonlinear analysis uh, and along with Abacus of course. Uh, we have included uh, material nonlinearity here with the hyperelastic uh, UO model inclusion. The topology optimization is uh, followed by a kind of uh, shape optimization to minimize the stress hotspot. And uh, finally, we are also uh, using fatigue uh, software effusive for fatigue validation. So some of the material uh, models we will try to uh, see. So basically Abacus uh, provides a very wide range of uh, material models for uh, plastics. So if you consider uh, linear and non-linear uh, material models we can uh, use the elasticity material model uh, similarly time and uh, frequency dependent means we can make use of viscoelasticity similarly for uh, cyclic or non-metallic type of uh, uh, classical behavior if you want to simulate you have to include plasticity and also we can make it as a combination of creep and viscoelasticity and uh, also damage models so uh, we will try to understand uh, more on this. So uh, depending on the operating condition, uh, elasticity definition for plastic could be linear or nonlinear. So nonlinear elasticity means hyperelasticity, and it can be combined with the Mullins effect uh, for uh, kind of stress softening and uh, type of uh, behavior. Although uh, this is more precisely used for uh, kind of elastomers or rubbers than for other uh, polymers. So with Abacus, uh, most material parameters, mainly like Young's modulus or material coefficients can be uh, made, uh, it can be made as a function of uh, temperature and also field variable. So field variables are uh, used, uh, user defined variables, which can be uh, specified using uh, uh, the keyword called a star field. And uh, more generally, it is uh, using like USD. Uh, you can make, make use of some of the uh, uh, subroutines like USD, uh, FLD type of uh, uh, subroutines. And uh, our field variables can uh, help you define uh, dependence of uh, material properties. Uh, on parameters that Abacus does not uh, directly support. Uh, for some of the example could be like uh, moisture. Wherever uh, moisture is not supported in Abacus, that can be accommodated, like the effect of moisture can be accommodated by means of uh, your, uh, uh, basically, uh, the field variables. Coming to viscoelasticity, so viscoelasticity is a is a, a rate dependent and it can be both linear and non-linear. So linear viscoelasticity is based on the generalized Maxwell model, which uses a series of uh, springs and dashboards, and uh, it is defined in Abacus uh, uh, means using the Prony series expansion. 
when it comes to linear uh, viscoelasticity, so it can be uh, applied to small or finite strain and uh, in time and also using frequency domain. So temperature uh, effect are uh, modeled uh, using uh, uh, basically TRS uh, type of uh, assumption. So basically uh, this means that a single uh, uh, master and uh, uh, single uh, uh, <coughs> single uh, master curve can be uh, used to <coughs> predict a temperature effect uh, across a, a varied uh, range of uh, temperature. So although Abacus provides a shift function for uh, TRS, uh, we have a user uh, subroutine called UTRS, uh, which also can be uh, used. Coming to nonlinear viscoelasticity, so it is based on a parallel elements again PRF type of uh, 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 framework. Uh, like uh, like the generalized Maxwell model, the PRF model also uses a series of uh, uh, springs as well as dashboard uh, systems. Plasticity helps modeling flow as well as yielding. So the most common plasticity model is associated with the metals. So uh, classical metal plasticity you are all aware and it is not generally applicable for uh, plastics. But for plastics models uh, based on non-associative flow rules such as extended uh, drucker prager model are more kind of applicable. You have to note that these plasticity model only work with linear elasticity assumptions. So non-linearity it will, will not work. So Abacus also provides uh, FEFP uh, model uh, that is nothing but finite uh, elasticity, finite plasticity model uh, which allows plasticity to be used with the large strain elasticity that is nothing but hyper elasticity. So usually FEFP model is used to model biological uh, tissues, uh, but uh, it can also be used to model polymers which show a similar behavior. Rate dependence uh, include viscoelasticity, uh, which is uh, discussed later. Viscoelasticity and creep effect is uh, mainly rate dependence. So yield behavior can be defined as a function of uh, strain rates. Also, uh, time dependence uh, could be incorporated uh, through uh, creep models. So Abacus uh, provides a built-in uh, creep model uh, such as uh, uh, power law and uh, hyperbolic uh, uh, sign law. But in general, most customers uh, use the uh, use separating creep to define the creep behavior. Finally, so Abacus provides a framework called progressive damage and failure to model the failure in materials. So PD and F is basically a framework which gives a general idea of how damage modeling should be approached and is summarized in the stress strain graph as shown. So basically we need to define uh, three aspects or uh, sometimes four aspects so undamaged behavior point of damage initiation damage evaluation and choice of element removal coming to uh, if you have access to Simulia learning community, you can uh, make use of these uh, workflows which are available and uh, some of the material models as well as uh, files are readily available for uh, your access. So uh, coming to uh, material calibration. 
So a calibration has a very specific uh, definition in the engineering community, uh, which is quite general and uh, may seem kind of irrelevant in uh, computational mechanics. So in the context of uh, computational mechanics, therefore, uh, the definition given above is uh, kind of uh, a more sensible and uh, kind of applicable. Uh, the definition here is based on the context of uh, CFD simulation. Uh, but it is generally applicable to the computational uh, methods and uh, also uh, related to cal calibration are uh, the terms validation, uh, verification and sensitivity which are explained very well in the uh, link uh, for a published paper uh, shared below. It is uh, important to have a good idea of these uh, terms because uh, material calibration as would be uh, discussed later makes assumption that uh, that are uh, not really spelt out explicitly as an example uh, take the case of uniaxial tensile test on a rubber specimen so if we use this test to calibrate muni revlin parameters by creating a abacus model uh, of the same and uh, like then we assume that the uh, that model is kind of validated. So uh, in 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 other words, the abacus model adequately represents the physical test which is being uh, simulated, and also the Mooney Revlin material model adequately represents the material behavior being observed during the physical test. So obviously, material calibration does not work if the material model is not sufficient enough to capture the observed material behavior. And also, uh, if the simulation model is not sufficient enough to capture the observed physical behavior also, it won't be that accurate. So uh, material calibration can be loosely uh, taken as reverse engineering. So test data you are taking and you are trying to obtain the material parameters or material coefficient. Here we need to note that tests are performed on specimen and uh, I, to establish the material behavior uh, we are doing a test on specimen whereas uh, uh, some of the components are available and we are kind of extrapolating the result here. So uh, test data, regardless of where it is obtained from, uh, can uh, serve as a basis for material calibration. So easier option uh, in Abacus uh, for calibrating the hyperelastic behavior in Abacus CA is by using evaluate option inside Abacus CA. So we have to input the available test data inside Abacus CA mainly in property module. So and uh, in the property manager we have to click on the evaluate uh, evaluate button and uh, we need to also select the range of uh, test data that need to be uh, evaluated. So once that is done, we need to select the stream energy potential that uh, that we would like to compare. We have a series of uh, strain energy potential as you can see on screen. So once you click on OK, so Abacus uh, CE uh, would show you the stability information like uh, a range of uh, strains for each deformation mode that the model uh, uh, will be kind of stable and uh, the corresponding coefficient will show it will throw. So also you could uh, see how closely the strain energy potential matches the test data and choose one uh, choose one uh, kind of more, more you can choose the appropriate one. We have to note here that the selection of the appropriate strain energy potential is not solely based on uh, how closely it matches the available test data, uh, but also uh, how closely it represents the expected deformation mode. Uh, 
the example could be like uh, if you have any input uh, mainly on only on uh, any actually tensile data but uh, if you are expecting uh, compression and uh, shear deformation then it is important to ensure that uh, the selected strain energy potential should be like uh, uh, you should predict the realistic response in compressive and shear even if the test data is not available so engineering judgment is required here and secondly uh, it should also remain stable during the expected strain range coming to uh, the mullins effect so hyperelastic material behavior is quite comp complicated and it is represented by the uh, test data which is uh, shown on the right hand side so uh, we can uh, see stress softening hysteresis progressive damage and permanent set so a uh, mullins effect uh, represents uh, stress softening part and a quasi static uh, cyclic loading and uh, given the complexity involved here so abacus assumed that mullins effect does not include permanent set and hysteresis so uh, with these assumptions mullins effect is uh, basically incorporated by uh, introducing a damage variable into the uh, strain energy potential u uh, which will be discussed uh, later again and uh, the damage variable is represented by the equation as shown uh, with r m beta uh, being the inputs uh, being the inputs to uh, abacus for mullins uh, effect uh, for more information, you can refer the documentation. Any theory manual will be uh, more helpful for you. So the simplest way to obtain these parameter is to simply run a one element abacus analysis. So as mentioned uh, uh, here, so input uh, the available test data for uh, Mullins effect, run the analysis and then calibrate the parameters. Uh, which would be uh, written to the uh, to the data file so uh, we have seen uh, using excel and uh, abacus ea for uh, cal uh, calibrating hyperelasticity uh, let's now let, let let's use uh, now uh, how to uh, make how to see and use uh, abacus along with iset so in this example we are uh, testing in actual uh, compression uh, we should ideally be free from friction uh, because uh, friction causes kind of lateral uh, constraints and also it is resulting in uh, kind of shear stress uh, which will completely corrupt the uh, compressive behavior so uh, and it gives a different uh, stress strain curve as well so uh, if there is uh, friction effects in the test then the uh, bad data can be used in the abacus ca uh, to get an initial estimate of the coefficient and using these coefficient in abacus model for uh, compression we can uh, get better estimate of the coefficient through data matching in iset so in this case uh, we use uh, yo model so the data matching is done uh, through an abacus model which provides uh, which, which parts uh, closer to the uh, ones obtained from the friction free test also uh, this can be used to calibrate for uh, friction coefficient which would match the bad test data and then the uh, and then uh, set the friction to zero in abacus once we do that we can find out the real stress strain response we have to note here that uh, this would only work when there is a high friction. So low friction uh, may not create a sufficiently different behavior here. Coming to a bushing test, uh, the most powerful uh, use of uh, data ma matching is what is illustrated here. Uh, calibration for uh, material coefficients are uh, based on component tests while the specimen level tests are uh, uh, mainly meant to represent uh, simple deformation modes uh, 
they are also kind of sometimes uh, expensive and time consuming as well. And also uh, component level tests are routinely performed. Uh, mainly to uh, means these component uh, level tests are routinely performed uh, to access uh, stiffness characteristics. Uh, in this workflow, we look at uh, both static and dynamic stiffness characteristic. So basic methodology uh, remains same and uh, use, we need to use Abacus to replicate the test scenario use eyesight to calibrate the material parameters for uh, minimizing the difference between test and simulation result here. So bushing information is obtained uh, from test. Uh, it is given in the table. So the values uh, are not shown here mainly due to confidentiality. So we will use uh, an initial guess for material parameters, mainly Mooney-Devlin and Roni series. And use this data uh, matching to match static stiffness and dynamic stiffness. So in this case, uh, we use uh, two different uh, eyesight sim flows, one for static and one for dynamic. So they can be combined to automate the entire procedure. More details uh, on this are available on the uh, a technical uh, presentation. So uh, once the Tony series uh, coefficients are obtained, uh, the storage and loss moduli can also be calculated. So basically, uh, this is uh, to validate the model with the test data, uh, which test data results uh, which are available in the EPDM paper uh, given in the link. Further, uh, I have listed some of the customer references. You have all these papers available for download and also if you uh, need, we can, you can put a request. We can provide you all these uh, customer uh, papers. With this reference, I would like to conclude uh, this webinar. Further, uh, we have a uh, few references when it comes to text uh, testing. So if you uh, need to do any uh, plastic related testing, you can also uh, go to these websites. If you have any uh, further queries, you can uh, uh, please uh, uh, ask.